this paper. Okay. Thank you. Proceed. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. In recent months, the debate about climate change has once again consumed many occupants of this building. We should absolutely debate the best ways to address, okay. respond and adapt to our changing climate. But the time to debate the very existence of human-induced climate change has well passed. Without courageous action taken right now, my two young boys or their children won't have the time to debate the existence of climate change. They'll be too busy dealing with the disastrous consequences. There will be more environmental disasters, droughts, cyclones, floods, or the destruction of Australia's greatest treasure, the Great Barrier Reef. More economic and community shocks like those still being felt in central and northern Queensland following tropical cyclones Debbie and Marcia. More displaced people, particularly from our own region. Uh, many island communities will be forced to seek sanctuary from rising oceans. It genuinely saddens me to have to say this, but it is the, it is the reality. The Prime Minister has failed to unshackle himself from the climate deniers in his own party and those floating on the Senate crossbench. He has failed to address climate change, even though we know he once believed passionately in it. History does not remember kindly good people who are defined by inaction. Labor is ready and willing to work with the coalition government to create a sustainable environment and energy plan for Australia. We've been leading this policy area in the parliament since the crossbench destruction of the carbon pollution reduction scheme nearly 10 years ago in the Senate back on the day when I saw two Liberal senators cross the floor, uh, when I was, we actually saw the member for Wentworth vote for Labor's CPRS. Let's get back to those times when Labor and Liberal, in a bipartisan consensus about the imperatives to act on climate change for the sake of future generations. Let's get this done. But if the Turnbull government is not prepared to work with Labor in opposition, then a Labor government will be ready with credible policies for immediate implementation once elected. The case for real and immediate action on climate change has never been stronger. Since the Abbott-Turnbull government repealed the carbon tax, we've seen more pollution and higher electricity bills, a real double whammy, especially for Australian manufacturers. Labor understands that building the energy capability of the future means more renewables and less coal-fired generation. In fact, renewables in combination with storage is the most economical method of creating new and reliable power. Without certainty on public policy in this space, we cannot and will not attract the economic environment required for investment. Labor has just announced more new policies to boost renewable energy generation and storage, create new jobs and put downward pressure on power prices. We will modernise the energy market rules to give more power to consumers, create renewable energy zones, as recommended by the Turnbull government's own chief scientists. This will drive investment and jobs in the sector and will change the Clean Energy Finance Corporation's investment return benchmark so it can invest in more generation and storage projects. Our transition to a low carbon economy will provide significant opportunities for regional development. We have a Northern Australia infrastructure facility to support this, to create future-proof critical infrastructure for our regions. That is what the fund is for. It is certainly not for lining the pockets of the huge multinational Adani Corporation. The NAIF was announced more than two years ago, and we're still waiting for the government to allocate a single dollar from the $5 billion fund to build job-generating infrastructure in Northern Australia. The only matter before the Commonwealth, before federal labour and the federal government, is whether or not taxpayers should loan $1 billion through the NAIF to this huge multinational company, Adani. My federal labour colleagues and I, especially the uh, Shadow Minister Butler, are steadfastly opposed to taxpayers' money being given to a multinational company to fund their private sector operation. The Adani project will ultimately live or die on its own, but it certainly has a lot of work to do to convince my fellow Queenslanders and Australians that it will meet its environmental obligations, already signed off by the federal government, and very importantly, that it also stacks up economically. Instead of a handout to a billionaire, Labor has committed to use that $1 billion to fund long overdue tourism infrastructure projects. These local Australian businesses employ locals and bring so much to the Queensland economy through the growing tourism market, both domestically and internationally. It is critically important to act on climate change, to protect the reef and ensure its wonder can be enjoyed by locals and tourists and my grandchildren long into the future. It is also critically important to ensure our energy market respects the need to transition to a low carbon economy. No country on this earth will be immune from climate change, big or small, mountainous or flat. 
ocean frontage or landlock. It does not matter. It is the government's responsibility to act now. To do otherwise would demonstrate complete moral and political cowardice.